give honor to your name. Oh, God, honor to your name. Oh, God, for oh, your name is great. Good morning, body of Christ. Good morning, good morning. For the names of the Lord is great and worthy to be praised. I was going to start with a word of encouragement this morning, but I think we need to go ahead and just start with the prayer, and then we'll encourage the body of Christ afterwards. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, God, for you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and we would be not be able to do anything without you without you lord god we are nothing jehovah shalom our peace jehovah shema ever present with us jehovah rapha our healer jehovah jireh our faithful provider and jehovah nisi our banner in the great name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the names of the Lord. And we thank you for the power that come behind your great name. Hallelujah, God. We give glory to your name on today, Jesus. And we lift you up on high because it is in that great name that we find our healing, Lord God, and our strength and the promises of God. Ah, first, because of who you are, we thank you. We thank you because in Isaiah 53, we find healing. We praise you because in Isaiah 53, we find healing. We praise you because in Nehemiah 8 and 10, the B portion, we find strength. We honor you, Lord God, because in Deuteronomy 28, we find the blessed promise of God. Hallelujah. Glory. And we will continue to magnify and praise your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus, because it in that great name, we find everything that we are looking for. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, for who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Body of Christ, we have the mind of Christ. We are covered in the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, let this mind be in Christ Jesus on today. Let this mind be in the Lord, which is also in Christ Jesus. And we believe you to remove doubt. We believe you to remove disbelief. We believe you to remove weariness. We believe you to remove depression. I don't know if you come believe in God for something on this morning, but we believe you to remove past failure. We believe you to remove wrongful thinking and re-renounce the spirit of slumber in the name of Jesus on this morning. Let these minds be in Christ Jesus, God, and we will forever give you the glory and the praise. In this season, body of Christ, we walk in the mind of Christ. In this season, we forget those people and things that are behind us. In this season, we think of the next win. In this season, we think of victorious thoughts. In this season, we think of breakthrough. In this season, Lord God, we think of conquering thoughts. And in this season, we rule and we have dominion. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thoughts of becoming victorious will be our portion in this season. We expect to win because we have God. We expect to rule because you told us so, Lord God. We expect to be the head and not the tail amen we expect joy because it came this morning and we expect to accomplish all because we walk with the holy spirit we expect the vision of 1517 to be complete to the glory of god hallelujah and we know that our expectation shall not be cut off because we know that your Holy Spirit has given us power to conquer, to rule, to win, to have dominion in this season. Hallelujah, God. So help us, Lord, to have the right mindset 
to live as king in our land. Lead us to a land flowing with milk and honey on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm talking about milk and honey that's on the inside of us. Because the anointing on the inside of us is going to break the yokes of bondage. Hallelujah, God. Let peace flow like a river. Let peace rule on the inside of us. Dismantle tormental mindset. Dismantle the tormentors in the name of Jesus, God. Now we can move to being encouraged by the Holy Spirit on this morning. Because he led me to a song. He said, did you reach out and touch somebody's hand y'all remember that song reach out and touch somebody's hand that means did you reach out and did you touch somebody's situation this week did you pick up the joy that came this morning did you pick up peace that came this morning we have duties and we have interests and both are important body of christ our duties are important because people are counting on us. And God is looking to see who did you reach this week. And your interest, it's important as well because it helped us to become a better us. We're not perfect, but we are being perfected. Can you say teaching? Can you say preaching? And can you say reaching? In Matthew 9 and 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Someone is waiting on you to touch them with your prayer, your words, your encouragement on this week. In Philippians 3 and 13, it says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Reaching, preaching, and teaching. This is where God wants us to be. Where we can have a mindset to reach, teach, and preach a generation. Hallelujah, God. Don't lose interest in the things of God, body of Christ, all of us. We can't lose interest. Believe in God for a greater outcome and that he will surely bring it to pass. All of God people have a place in the choir, amen? We all are created for God's glory and we all are created for God's great purpose. So don't think that you are forgotten. Don't think that God is not using you because he can use you in your homes with your family. He can use you in ministry. He can use you in your school students. God can use you. If you are elderly, he can use your testimony. We all have a place. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this great day, oh God. We thank you for this wonderful morning, God, another day to give you glory. And we submit to the flow of the Spirit on this morning, and we believe in the power as we teach, preach, and reach. Amen. We come out to reach out to you this morning as we wake you to Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Thank God. Give God a praise for a ministry so great that he's brought forth to you and that he's reaching out to you to be able to give a sent word from a mighty man that he placed him on this house, Shekinah Glory Powerhouse, Pastor Billy J. Davis Jr. For he's not only a pastor, but he's an apostle and he's a prophet. And we thank God for placing him in this ministry. And not only him, but First Lady Sherilyn Davis. But he placed them both one by one together for they can bring forth and reach out to you to show forth a great ministry that he's bringing forth. That he's using this house to bring forth a great word, a talk word, a teach word, a preach word that you shall receive and understand the greatness of God because with God's glory and God's grace, we are here to say that we are living today on this bright new day, November 1st, 2020, a day that we all never have seen before. But if you got up this morning and if you're watching and viewing or hearing us in whichever way or network that you're with us, 
we ask you to give God a hand clap of praise because he gave you another day of life where you can be able to hear God's word and be able to receive God's word up in the house of Shekana Glory Powerhouse, your recharging station, that you shall be recharged and filled with God's word. And we just ask that you join us today, God. Hallelujah, Lord. And bless us, Lord, matter, Lord, with your word, Lord. Hallelujah. And then we ask you all, enjoy the word in the house of Shekana Glory Powerhouse because we praise God up in this house. So if you in your house or wherever you at, praise God and receive God's word wherever you at. Praise God and tell somebody, hey, I am joining Shekinah Glory Powerhouse on Facebook, on Zoom, on YouTube, C-O-T-P-O-H, on conference call, whatever way that you are joining this ministry. We thank God for you joining and we welcome you on today. So enjoy God's word and praise and give God a mighty good praise and that you may be blessed for today's word. Amen. Greetings, Shekinah Glory Powerhouse and family. This morning, we're going to have our confession and professions of faith for November 2020. If you repeat after me, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. and God, and God. You, are my Father. you are my Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You, are you are my God. I thank you, I thank you. Heavenly, Father, Heavenly Father, for your Son, for your son. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is my Passover lamb from this day forward I walk under his blood covering life is in the blood the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness and sin I am protected by the blood of Jesus. I have a blood bought right to my healing, deliverance, peace, joy, and prosperity. I am the redeemed, the redeemed of, the of the Lord. This is, this is my, season my season of thanksgiving. Of thanksgiving. I, am I am thankful that God, that God shall, avenge shall avenge me, me his, elect, his elect, speedily. speedily. I, am I am thankful that the set time to favor Shekinah has come. I am thankful that all weapons formed against me fall under God's vengeance this month. Release your Holy Spirit, your power, your might, your strength, your strength, your healing virtue, your healing virtue delivering, power, delivering power, and protection, and protection in, our lives. in our lives. Thank you, Thank you. That, our that our prayers have been heard, have been heard and, are and are favorable answered according to, according to your, greatness your greatness and power. Thank you, Thank you for your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit living, within living within us. Thank you, Thank you that, signs that signs follow your word. Your word. Our, hope Our hope is in you. Our lives are changed, lives are changed. Because, because of your grace, your grace. and mercy. Souls are converted today. The devourer is rebuked in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Chicago Powerhouse, Body of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone? 
Oh, it's a brand new day, brand new month, 11th month of the year, and you're still here. Still here by God's grace. I was, like I said, I always get up here and I talk about faith, and I kind of struggled this week. I read a 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, 5, and it reads somebody say, Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. I kept reading, I kept reading, I said, reprobate, reprobate. So I had to search the scripture and I had to get a definition of it. And once I searched the scripture, I learned that the people of Israel, they kind of like rejected God after all he had done, after all they'd been through. But how don't you know that they just had to keep their faith? And someone said something to me, I heard it this week on the advertisement, it said, faith sees best in darkness. So no matter what your darkness hours is, Believe me, your fate will shine through it. So join me right now as we read, as I recite the kind of glory powerhouse, our declaration of faith. The word of God, word of God is what I stand upon. I stand upon. My, faith My faith is ever growing. Is ever growing. I, live I live by faith. By faith. I, declare I declare by faith, by faith. The, power the power of death, of death. And, life and life is in my tongue. I am blessed in the city and blessed in the field because you told me so, God. In your son Christ, I'm sorry, I'm blessed in spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In your son Christ, Father, you know what things I have need of before I ask. You take pleasure in the prosperity of me, your servant, if I can believe all things are possible to me. Wow. As the kind of glory apostolic stands, praise anticipate, mercy liberate, grace facilitate, Faith generates, Faith generates. Jesus, advocate. Jesus advocate, power eradicate, power eradicate. The, cross the cross emancipate, the blood exonerate, the, blood exonerate. the, Holy, Spirit the Holy Spirit articulate, the, Spirit articulate. the, word, predicate. the word predicate. Just keep your faith this month, stay strong. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Faith personified, hope actualized, love exemplified. Good morning, Shekinah Glory, Powerhouse, and fellow believers. Here are your announcements. Pastor and First Lady Davis would like to thank those who celebrated them during their month of celebration. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, this November, a month for Thanksgiving and a month of Thanksgiving. Is there anybody in this place on this morning that has anything to be thankful for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a rough year. I can't really say it's been that rough for me, though. Hallelujah. God has been good to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. It was a lot going on out there in the world, but God spared my life. I ain't lost nothing. Hallelujah, God. And I just thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I don't say that to be arrogant. I'm just grateful because it could have been another way, y'all. It could have been another way, y'all. I'm still in my house. I still have my job. I still have money. I still have food. I still have clothes. Hallelujah. And it's not because of me. It's not because of me. If I told you how much I make, you'd be wondering how I'm surviving. It's not because of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Barely making more than minimum wage. Come on in here, somebody. Come on up in here, somebody. But by God, hallelujah, Jesus. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And we have a lot to be thankful for. Things may not look right. Things may not be going the way you want them to go. But God is still faithful. God is still good. God is still on the throne. The government is on his shoulders. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what they're saying in the news. I don't care what's going on in the media. You 
are still in the land of the living, therefore open up your blessed God mouth and give God the praise that he so radically deserves because he is worthy in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be depressed. I will not be depressed. I will not be oppressed. I will not be suppressed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is the 11th month. This is the 11th month. Hallelujah. If you made it through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, you made it to November the 1st, you ought to open up your mouth and give God the best praise. I made it. Somebody ought to say, I made it. 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 Through COVID-19, I made it. Through Hurricane Michael, I made it. Through sickness and disease, I made it. Through depression, I made it. Through loneliness, I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Been lied on. Been talked about. But I made it. 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 Had to cry. Had to cry sometimes. Had to cry sometimes. But I made it. I made it. I made it. 
Hallelujah. That's how you kick off Thanksgiving. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do that in your house. You can run around your kitchen, shout in the bathroom, roll all over your bed. But whatever you do, give God the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord in this place as he unloads our daily benefits to us. There is plenty, pretty much consistency in our schedule. Remember, noonday prayer every Tuesday. Non-workers give diligence to attend. Lemon is 25 people. 8 a.m. prayer on Saturday. It's every Saturday at 8 a.m. Stop sleeping in on your blessings. Don't be arbitrary. We have increased our limit to 25 people. So come on out for prayer. We're still practicing social distancing and wearing of masks. Stay vigilant in your prayers and expectant and expected in your hope. God is still in control. Hallelujah. Remember, this is a blessed house. Our next project is the fence and finishing God's business at 1517 Fortune Avenue. So far, we have two people that have responded to the request to pick up the special packages. These are special packages Pastor Davis wants the members to have. So see Minister Thompson, coordinate the pickup with Minister Thompson so that you can get this package, amen. If a prophet wants to bless you, you need to get your blessing, amen. <laughs> All out of town members, please contact Minister Thompson with a good address and phone number so that Pastor Davis can contact you. Last but not least, our avenues of sewing are cash, check, money order, electronic measures are cash app, dollar sign, capital S, capital G, capital P, capital H, capital W, lowercase e, L, L. Again, that's dollar sign, capital S, capital G, capital P, capital H, capital W, E, L, L. Or Giftify. Download the app, Shekinah Glory Ministries, look for Panama City, or put in our zip code 32405, our address 1603 Fortune Avenue, Panama City will show. Those are, these are the announcements for Shekinah Glory Powerhouse, where faith is personified, hope is actualized, and love is exemplified, and the devil is horrified. Hallelujah! Open up your mouth and give God some praise. Don't stop praising him, amen. Hallelujah! I mean, oh, he's worthy of the glory and the honor. He's worthy of the praise, amen. Come on and continue to worship God in this place. And while you're sitting at home, continue to worship and praise his name. Say we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb that was slain. Say we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb that was slain. We are victorious, and we are conquerors, and he is more than enough for me. Sing, we have, we have the blood
Wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, come on. 
He's a mighty God who's full of wonder. Somebody say, a mighty wonder. He's a mighty wonder. Say it again, a mighty wonder God. A mighty you wonder. are a wonderful God, a wonder worker. Come on now. God is power Hallelujah. in our lives. He's power in our health. He's power in our situation. God is powerful. Father God, we honor you and we thank you, God, for that grace, for that mercy, for truth in the inward parts. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the manifestation of your spirit that was given to all of us that we should profit. Bless us and keep us in power and strengthen us is your servant's prayer. God, I give you the praise. I give you the honor and the glory for all that you've done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and tell them God's word, God's word. is our foundation. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is our foundation. The Holy Spirit is our foundation and uh, most of all the power of the holy ghost is our foundation we got somebody tell them you can't do it by yourself as much as you want to do it by yourself you can't do it by yourself you may be seated Certainly we thank God for all that he's done, for all that he's given to us. It is my purpose not to be before you long, but to give the glory to God for what he's saying and what he's doing in this season. You know, I'm happy to make it into this month. Y'all know what November is. Come on now. November is that month where prodigies and geniuses were born. And, you know, we can't get away from that. And certainly we thank God for it. But I want you to stay mindful and stay focused because I don't know, I, I just long ago before I ever became a pastor, before I ever really gave my life to the Lord, there was one thing that I kept embedded in me. And that was this mindset that I don't want to go through all of this life down here thinking that I'm serving God and having missed the mark. But I would rather serve God in all that the Holy Spirit teaches me and if it comes in gradual moves, it's all right. Then to have a powerful one move and it's all said and done. Look at somebody tell them, Pastor Davis, doesn't want you to be a one-hit wonder. <laughs> oh, y'all hear me? Somebody say thoroughly equipped for the work of the ministry. On Wednesday, I did a comprehensive teaching on prayer. And, you know, I, I want to encourage you to go and look at it on C-O-T-P-O-H, YouTube. It's there, Lesson on Prayer. And don't go there without a pen or a paper. Don't go there without anticipating the Holy Spirit to teach you. Too often, y'all listen, but you don't hear. Because hearing promote, provokes action. My goodness. You can listen to something and disregard it. But when you hear it and it, it, it goes into your spirit, man, it works you. I don't want to waste my time too much trying to push you to something that I've already taught. I'm telling you that when you don't follow through, there will be a misrepresentation of truth to you. And the truth is this, in Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Yet many Christians, they give confidence and credence to the enemy and his plans. When they concede to the adversity that life and choices have placed on them. Everything is not just life and everything is not the devil. Sometimes you gotta grow up and accept the consequences of your choices. Somebody say the consequences of my choices. I, I, uh. See, see, 
Jesus was tempted like we was, but he didn't sin. But Jesus also did something else we don't do. Jesus often prayed. Let me say that again. Jesus often prayed. It's amazing to me how many of you will run and open up your Bible, but you haven't prayed. Haven't prayed in weeks, haven't prayed in days. Instead, they open up the scripture, want the Holy Spirit to witness to you when you haven't communicated with God in days. What? Let me ask you a question. Let me put it in a, 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 a way that you can understand it. I'm trying not to teach, but I guess it's dropping, so let me get it out this way. If you were in a relationship, and in that particular relationship, he or she was gone for six days, but they came back expecting you to have supper ready on the sixth day. How well is that gonna go? Uh, I'm not hearing you. But you can avoid God all of those days, but expect him to have what you asked for ready. Okay, it doesn't work like that, doesn't work like that. I talked about prayer being our attempt to communicate with God. That it was the summation of our expectation that when God heard our cries, when he heard the cries of the righteous, that he responds with answers better known as our hope. I told you that prayer was a spiritual force. I told you that prayer was a purposeful act to involve God and let him rule over provinces, mindsets, and issues. That prayer ascertained that he is the most high God and we must go to, through him. That prayer is an expression of the word of God through the lens of faith. That prayer brings purposeful and powerful hope to the end of situation or circumstance. But most of all, that prayer destroyed powers and principalities, emissaries and agents of the darkness that it changed season. You want to go in and listen to that. Because God is trying to tell you, you can pray, you can read the Bible, you can do all of what you want to do, but at the end of the day, your situation is going to be the same because of your laziness. Somebody said, my laziness, my slowfulness, my disregard, and my being stout-hearted. Let me teach now. I got to move. I got to move. I ain't moving, and I want to give you what God has given me because I've been trying for three times that I've been up to talk about a mentality that some of you all have. I'm going to get it out today. Tell you, he's going to get it out quickly. So let's talk about your mind. Let's talk about the mind being a battlefield. But understanding that it's just a, a, a plain course, if we can see that. And then there are opposing forces showing up on that plane. That, that there, there are opposing forces and not realizing that one of them is your flesh and the other one is your spirit showing up in the battlefield of your mind. Then... There are things that have happened in your life where the enemy has entrenched himself in the bunkers of your mind. And he's done it through past behavior. Somebody say past behavior. Somebody say past shame. And the enemy has buried himself, come on now, in the archives of your mind. Waiting on you to recall him. You remember what happened to me when I was 10? My goodness, you're 50 something, you're 60, you're 70, and you're letting the enemy pull up the strength of something that was 50 years old. And he pulls it up right when you're about to be empowered by the things of God. Are y'all hearing me? Can y'all hear me? That, 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 that God is trying to empower you, and, and yet you're willing to go back all of those years to disregard a work that God is doing now. You know, you have to understand something that you control your strengths and your weaknesses. Nobody else control that. You condition your mind to strengths and weaknesses. But what most people won't do is when they come to church, let me show you the, the flaw that Christians make. When you come to church, you want to show God your strength instead of your weakness. Why don't you bring your weakness to church so that God can build it up? Y'all not hearing me? See, people, when they come to church, they want you to see their gift they call. They want to bring a strength. But what about bringing your weakness? What about coming before God, letting God know that you're weak? 
that, 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 that there is a weakness in you. Are, are you hearing me? And, and, that, and that God is telling you, look, I want to fortify you. I want to build you up. I want to do something. But nothing is happening. You know why? Because somebody taught you all that you need to just go and do what the church people have told you to do. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so you come in with a false mindset where you know you're weak trying to present strength. I'm going to teach you. Is that all right? I know we're having technicalities and all the technical difficulties. It's, I'm not moved by that. This word will go forward with power. It'll go forward with power. You may not be able to see it, but you'll be able to hear it later on in the week. It will go forward. It will be recorded. You don't have to worry about the enemy. No, somebody's going to be liberated today. Tell your neighbor, it's going to be me. It's going to. So you understand that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He'll try to fight something, but he can't fight what's on the inside of you. I don't need microphone nor camera to know who we are in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, God called you to be somebody. But, but trouble finds all of us. We're, we're not strong because we live in this presumptuous state of denial. We're strong because our hope is in God. Our faith is not superficial. Stop trying to impress others with unnecessary suffering and foolish tolerance from the enemy. <laughs> trying to act like you strong and it's a test from God. It's no test from God. It's your inability to understand the gifts and the power and the things that God has given you. So my assignment starts now. And my assignment has me delivering the people from the dozen of poverty, my goodness, to the pinnacles of prosperity. Are y'all hearing me? And I want you to follow me. I want you to repeat this after me. Look at somebody tell them poverty has companioned you too long. Oh, y'all oh, y'all didn't say that. Y'all repeated it, but you didn't say it. Say it now. Say it on your own. But poverty is a mindset, but so is prosperity. Prosperity is a mindset. But the thing about poverty is that poverty companions itself with deception. Most impoverished people live in a state of denial, and they ultimately become critical people. Critics. Somebody say critics. critics. Say it again. Critics. critics. Poverty causes shame for many. But Proverbs 3 and 35, the B portion says, shame shall be the promotion of fools. I taught you Wednesday night about shame being like clothes. And I don't want to reteach. I need you to go back and search that in your own time. You're not going to take up primary time now on something that you could have had three days worth of putting on the inside of you but the custodian of your thoughts is you you control how you think you control what you think you control what you hold on to you control what you let go of you determine your successes and your failures you determine your actions and your decisions, and it's all left up to you tell me you're the custodian of that you're responsible for that now if you live it if you give responsibility to someone else to control your mind that's still on you you still was in charge. Well, you better start teaching. You're going to get there. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more idly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. I, I, I need you, and, and I often do this, and then people say, well, why do pastors tell you to look around or say something to somebody? Why not? <laughs> why keep it in your head? You have what you say and not what you think. Are oh, you hearing me? I need you to look at somebody and tell them this. God gave you a measure of faith say it again say it one more time 
Now, now let me teach you. What, what, what do you. Why do you have us reiterate that? Uh, because I, I want you to hear something. God expects faith to be a part of us like our lungs are to our lives. Are you hearing me? In other words, your lungs work independent of your thought process. Y'all didn't hear that. Am I right? You don't have to think about breathing. Your lungs automatically do stuff without you breathing. Am I right? And when we start exercising the faith that the measure of faith that God gave us, that faith kicks in like our lungs kick in. Are y'all hearing me? But God gave all of us a grace also. He gave us a grace for our call. He has purpose things in our lives. But most Christian people don't understand that purposes are futuristic. In other words, you were born with or for a purpose, but you still have to obtain, my goodness, you have to obtain what God has called. You have to move into it. I'll show you what I'm talking about with a better example. You like to say all things work together for good. Am I right? But let's go to something simple that you can understand. What is the purpose of a car? To what? What is, what is the purpose of you, you owning a car then? Did they wait till you needed transportation to make a car? Or did they make the car first? So you thinking that God wait until you need something to make it? Or is God waiting on you to acquire what he has already purchased for you. Are you hearing me? See, you have some things that God have already purchased for you, but tell them you haven't even gone by the lot. <laughs> you sit up praying, God, da, 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 bo, da, 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 da. You, you all into all of that. And, and God is saying, hold on a minute, I laid that up for you. Go find it. I have purposed something for you. The book tells us in 1 John 3 and 8, and I'm moving, trying to get to my part. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. When purposes are unknown, when the setting forth of something, when the intention of something is unknown and it comes to God, that work will be stagnated. Are y'all hearing me? In other words, failure can't be an option. Tell your neighbor, failure can't, be an failure can't be an option. It cannot be an option. Say it again. It Let me see how many students of faith don't know the word I really got. Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalms 11 and 3 says what? If the foundation <laughs> be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Am I right? If the mindset that's postured to believe God be destroyed, what can you do? See, you're so busy every time you see the word foundation, you start thinking of a house. But what foundation of mindset do you have? Where have you postured your mind to believe God that you said no matter what force, no matter what power, no matter what the enemy throws at me, I will yet believe God. God gave you love. Tell you, God gave you love because he's love. Are you hearing me? God gave you faith. He gave you faith. But God also gave us wisdom. Let me give you a, a wisdom nugget and I'll move to my piece of lesson. This is for you all. My piece of lesson a bless those who are able to hear. But hear this nugget. None of you, as saved as you are, as gifted as you are, None of us, I'll use that pronoun. As gifted as we are, as saved as we are, can build a foundation in a storm. I'm not teaching well, right? Why we're deep right there, are you hearing me? See, 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 in other words, you can't build a foundation in a storm. And if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So God is saying, I want you to build when there's not a. I want you to get in my word when there's not a. I want you to pray when there's not a. Because you can't build 
You know, so many people are trying to build while it's storming in their lives. You see, when you have external factors and things that are working against you, when you have external factors, they affect your optical nerve. And when your optical nerve pick up something external, it gives a stimuli to the brain. To tell the brain, this is what I see. You know, if, I, if somebody brought in a, a six foot rattler right now, half of y'all will start clearing the building. You saved into everything. But that fear would kick in, am I right? You wouldn't sit there waiting on me to finish teaching, teaching. You know you would. You'd be like, Pastor, I lost his mind. You know they're bringing snakes in the building now, something wrong with them. You'll find a reason to never come back. Am I right? But that's a fear who developed. You developed it, am I right? What are you talking about, Pastor David? Let, let me help you out a little bit. See, I, I, I hope that, uh, let me see who I can pick on. <laughs> All of y'all look a little sensitive today out there. And y'all look like y'all might have went through something this week. So I don't want to hurt nobody feeling. So let, let's just go against, Darius, you don't mind me using you and uh, Billy for an ana analysis, do your uh, comparison analogy. <sighs> okay. If we brought one of the chairs in the sanctuary out, and we set it in the middle of the floor. And we tell Billy to run and jump over the chair. And we tell Darius to run and jump over the chair. Where do we place our confidence at? Because we're going by external factors. Not knowing what's internally inside somebody. But what if Darius been practicing jumping over a chair? You would have lost. You, don't, you understand what I'm saying? And see, that's what happened. The enemy will give you something that you're looking at that you think can't do what it's supposed to do. But the, what I, my teaching point is this, is that they are both working under the same laws or they're working under the same principles and so they both have to defy the law of gravity are you hearing me and they both have to receive the law of lift to go up over am i right the law of lift had to come into play in other words just because somebody looked like they can't go over something doesn't mean that they can't lift themselves up over that thing and up over that situation and what God is telling me to tell the body of Christ today is to tell you look like you can't get over that storm uh, look like you can't get over what's going on but he said mount up with wings uh, as an eagle and just let the wind get up under you are you hearing me let the wind of God pick you up God said I didn't make you to keep jumping over stuff I made you to fly over it Glory to God. See, because what happened, as soon as I made the analogy, you went on what you see to or know to be familiar. <laughs> you don't know if Billy got a sprained ankle. <laughs> you don't know if Billy got a bad back. You simply went on who you thought looked more able to accomplish the task. And that is how the enemy deceives people. He gets them focusing on, he looks more able to keep you down than you look like you're able to come out and through. But I come to encourage somebody today to tell you that God sent me to tell you that he already brought you out. You just got to come over on the Lord's side. What's happening is you're resting in the recesses of your own mind and denying the power of God. God wants people who give him the glory. And we give God glory. Y'all do understand glory to Shekinah, Kabod. You, 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 do, you do understand that 
it ascertains or uh, uh, deals with a weightiness and and people think that it means a heaviness that 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 god has made you heavy in the anointing but that's not exactly accurate it, it, there's some measure to that but that's not exactly accurate when we start talking about the weightiness of god as we compare it in referencing the shekinah you have to start looking at this let me ask you a question which one would you rather have a pound of water or a pound of gold which one the most value i asked the question it's not rhetorical i didn't hear you. it's not a rhetorical question which one would you rather have i can't hear you but you show up to God full of I'm not teaching well. I'm not teaching well. So what are you saying? What I got to do with this God in the way? In other words, it's more valuable to have the thing from God, even though God made water. And God tells you you need water. But God supplies you with water. You don't supply him. And he supplies you with his power, with his anointing. You're trying to supply God with you. And you want God to conform to your program and to become you. And God is saying, I'm not going to become you. You're going to have to pour out. You're going to have to empty out. And you're going to have to become a new wine skin. I don't care how long you've been like you are, you're wrong to stay the same. You are wrong to stay the same. And if I can use my word that y'all don't like, you are showing yourself to be retarded. Opting not to change because you have always been like this. This is my personality. This is mine, this is mine, this is mine. Justifying yourself. Not realizing that same you that used to be the accuser of the brethren is still the accuser of the brethren. That same you that used to find fault in everybody still find fault in everybody. Got quiet up in here and then. I hit that old man, didn't I? That old man and you stood up, then he didn't like what I said. Then are you hearing me? See, 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 you so busy coming to church, or you so busy tuning in so you can judge who or what somebody looked like and what they said. You want to find fault instead of finding strength in what they said. Instead of being empowered by in what they said. So my question comes to you: when was the last time you empowered somebody with your words instead of tearing somebody down with your feelings? I'm not teaching well. I'm not teaching well. Y'all don't like me right now. I, I, I don't remember him pulling the text. My text said that you're not to be to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your what? Tell your neighbor, owe you? Equal owes you. It's real simple. In other words, you either know yourself to be new, created in the image of after Christ Jesus, or you know yourself to be old, created after the image of you. Where you become your own God. You do things your way, when you want to, how you want to, if you want to, and then you want God to come in and co-sign your plan. When the Bible already told us, we don't do that. That's not what he does. God said, empty out. Look at somebody, tell them, empty out. Empty out. Tell them again, empty out. empty out. Let me close. Let me, let me close because y'all looking at me strange. I must have hit a nerve. I'm not closing because I'm not, I'm that kind of pastor. People that know me know that. I'm closing because I gave you the main emphasis of what God has said. But when God brought them into Canaan, all they could do was murmur. All they could do is complain. You, a lot of you all, resemble those people. I was sharing with those that don't have a history of the ministry how 
we used to load up the vans with equipment, go to the cafeteria, mop the cafeteria, break it down first, all table chairs, chairs first, then tables and chairs. Am I right? Then mop it. Then set up for the service. Then give God all the glory. And guess what? We were on time for everything, all the and now you have a people because God gave them their own place that all of a sudden they can't seem to find it. As though there was a shift in when Michael came. As though God moved 1603. Allow me to say, you better anchor. You better anchor yourselves in. Because the storm is real. And it's a destructive storm. It's trying to pull you away while you're not anchored in your mind. My job is to get you to assess yourself in the way you process. This is a line that gets me in trouble. I have to say it. I have to say it because it's the only way you strengthen people. No one really cares how you feel if it's gonna push you to maturity. No one cares that you got mad if it's going to mature you. And lastly, and I could get in trouble for this, and I'll try to find another way to say it better the next time, but I don't have time to find the words for it right now. Oh, okay, Holy Spirit, help me out. No one's going to kiss up to you. Are oh, you hearing me? You got to grow up to go up. You got to let go. And don't hear me say let go. No, no, what I'm going to say. You got to let go of you so you can find a new you. So you talking about let go, let go. No, 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 there's no transition. The old man had to die. The old man perished day by day. The inward man is renewed what? which means that there must be a killing of old self. I didn't hear you. It's quiet up in here now. Well, Pastor Neil, they've been in church a long time. They came on at 1030. They you off in 30 some minutes. You know, they jumped around, they hollered around. They've been dancing and stuff. Man, I got to get in the church. They want me to open up the church so bad. I keep getting questions. When are you going to open up, Pastor? When are you going to open up? When is Corona going to die? <laughs> when is COVID-19 going to die? What do y'all want me to do? Bring y'all in here so y'all can sue us? Not happening on my watch. Are y'all hearing me? Learn to praise God where you at. Stop being ignorant and stupid. COVID-19 is real. It's still out there. We're hitting the highest number this past week than we had all year. And people are running around still not wearing masks, and that's their choice. Life is choice driven. But you better know what's going on. Are y'all with me? So renew your mind. Somebody say, renew your mind. Renew your mind. You know I didn't get to my lesson. Give God that praise. I'm through. Give God that praise. <laughs> Give God that praise. So, Pastor Dave, you saying that if God give you a lesson, that you pick and choose when you teach it? Exactly. Duh. Everybody got to learn that just because you get a word don't mean it's right right then. Am I right? I dropped so much that by the time I told you you had to do an internal washing that you had to be introspective, it froze right there. Am I right? Like, oh my goodness. So you saying, exactly. I tell you, God loves me though. And look at somebody telling me, God loves you. And that's my message is a message of love to tell you that God cares for you so much so that he don't want you to be phony or fake. I closed last week and I closed again with the same thing because it's obvious that there are no replays or either there's no memorization. I put something very hard out there at the end of the message last week. I said I need a single donor to sow $400 to something that the ministry needs. I'm going to put it out there again because I know y'all be in better shape. Y'all try to time stuff instead of just 
given a vow because you could have just made a vow and it would have been fine. Are you hearing me? A single donor. So Pastor Davis, you telling me, so if five people come, you're going to take one or you're going to take all five? Any of y'all that know me, what you think? <laughs> we realize that the house belongs to God and we're going to be debt free in everything that we do. I can assure you by Sunday, God would have touched somebody's heart because your wallet is not the issue. Your discretion is. Father God, we on the end, we thank you for the word spoken. We thank you, God, that grace and peace has been multiplied unto us. Bless, keep, empower, and strengthen your people as your servants' prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great day.